Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. This is the 2024 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport Touring. And before any of the correction Nazis strike up a conversation down in the comments section saying this isn't really a 2024, well, there you go. Right there, 2024. So, you know that I'm telling you the truth. And this model is rally red with black interior and in today's video, we're going to give you the information to answer the question, do the features match the price? There's definitely a lot here. It's a very popular vehicle. The Civics offer a manual transmission. That's nice to know. Not something you see very often in this day and age, but let's dig in a little bit deeper and see what you get for the price that you ultimately pay for this model. To start off with, you're going to get a very sharp looking vehicle. This 11th generation Civic hatchback definitely, I think, fills the bill when it comes to sharp lines looking sporty as it should. Everything is just the right size, including the upper and the lower grills. You're going to find the LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and down there on the lower portion of the bumper, let's see here, let's go to this side. It might be a little bit easier to see because there's a shadow, but you have the LED fog lights as well. And you're going to have Honda sensing here. What exactly does that bring to the table? That's all those great safety features and driving aids such as adaptive cruise control, collision mitigation braking, lane keeping assist, road departure, and traffic jam assist. And even though it's not really part of Honda sensing, here in these power adjustable heated manually folding side view mirrors with turn signals built in you'll find blind spot monitoring that's always a good thing i know that's a favorite among potential owners of any vehicle including these civics here's your remote for 2024 nice compact it's light but it is sturdy and it definitely gets the job done remote start right there and obviously the civic currently only comes in front wheel drive. Number one, would you like to see an all wheel drive option? And number two, maybe the most important question to answer where front wheel drive or all wheel drive is concerned. If all wheel drive was available, would you be willing to pay the extra cost? Because there definitely would be an up charge or a markup in price based on that. Don't know what that would be, but just something to consider. Tire and wheel size, 235 will be the width of 40 series sidewall wrapped around those nice gloss black 18 inch wheels. And by the way, going back to the remote, it is a proximity key, a smart key. Walk away feature is here. So you're gonna have all of those nice features that again, I know a lot of you want. That's part of what you're paying for here. And you will find the LED tail lights rounding everything off nicely here. Obviously that Honda logo prominently displayed and really standing out quite well as, well as well as the sport and touring logos here on the rally red exterior color. A bit of a rear diffuser back here and your exhaust outlets on the rear as well as a very nice sporty look. Going to have that rear window wiper to help keep things nice and clean back here. Although when you're in motion driving down the road, water is just going to be going down like that. That's a good thing. You'll see the kick up right there. A little bit of a spoiler style look on the rear with that, a very nice design. But let's talk a little bit about what you'll find under the hood with this model. Talked about the fact that you can have a six speed manual transmission if so desired. Let's talk a little bit more about what this particular model has. Under the hood is the 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes a plentiful for this particular model of vehicle 180 horsepower. The torque numbers come in at 177. Yes, it is mated to the continuously variable transmission, but it's a very well-behaved transmission, not something I can say of all CVTs out there. And a big advantage to not having the most powerful engine or largest engine under the hood. Let's see if we can give you a good look at it right here. 30 city, 37 highway, 33 combined, and three gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. Now, let's talk a little bit about price. You'll see 32,545 is the base sticker price, but because Holmes Honda added a few features here, 
as you can see right here, that's everything right here. There are some features that are added. So the sticker price goes up to $35,339. Tell me what you think about that. We're not finished looking at everything, but that way you know the price now, and we'll continue looking at the features that you get for that price. And there are some important things to talk about here in the rear cargo area. First of all, cargo capacity, a rather plentiful 24.5 cubic feet. And it does have the retractable cargo cover back here. A little bit of an interesting thing. Reminds me of an old school shade for a window. A lot of you might not even know what that is. And to maximize cargo capacity, pretty simple to do. All you're going to do, well, first of all, we need to release the seat belts here. But I'm going to do something that I know a lot of people don't do in these videos. I'm going to maximize the cargo capacity and show you both sides. Because some of you have said you like to see that. So I'm going to make sure that you do. So there's how everything looks where that is concerned from this point of view. And then from the rear hatch area, that is what it looks like as well. Obviously a lot of space in here as far as on the sides and between the fender wells but there's also something here that I think a lot of you are really going to like. You can actually get that floor completely up and out of the way if you ever need to gain access to your spare tire. That's right, no tire repair kits here. That's a good thing. And there are, are excuse me, let's get out of that tongue twist. There are all of the tools to change the tire. It's okay to have something to laugh at even if I get tongue twisted and that's what makes you laugh. And taking a look, in through the passenger side rear door. Comfortable armrest. I always tell people, put your arm up there. See how comfortable it really is, because a lot of the time, even I've been guilty of it, we do this. That really doesn't tell you much. You put your arm up there and you know how comfortable it really is. And there is a door bin here that can be used as a bottle holder or snack holder or whatever anybody wants to put in there that's sitting in the back seat area and the fold-out armrest with the cup holders built in. Now, there are no rear air conditioning vents, but keep in mind, there was a time when we had vehicles that were far larger than this, and there were no rear air conditioning vents, and we survived. It's okay. Would it be nice to have rear air conditioning vents? Sure. Is it a requirement? I don't think so. I think this size of an interior will handle whatever temperature you need to do deal with as far as whether you need to heat things up or cool things down with no problem and dual usb ports i'm still waiting to see more car manufacturers put in three usb ports in the back seat area because obviously you have seating for three people back here you could buy an adapter to fix that just in case you were curious just one of those observations and tell me what you would like to see I know a lot of you have varying opinions. Do you like having a sunroof? If so, do you want a conventional size such as what the Civic currently offers or would you like to have a panoramic sunroof option? And obviously with the front doors being a little larger, well, that means number one, a larger armrest and a larger door bin. For the door bin snobs in your life, well, they're gonna have to call shotgun or maybe wrestle the remote out of your hands and they can sit in the driver's seat. A little bit of gloss black here as far as the trim goes in here on the Sport Touring trim level. That's right. You will have a power adjustable seat for the passenger, which means you will also have the same for the driver. Going to have a little more of that gloss black, I think, in appropriate areas here with the dash area. And then you have your adjustments for your air conditioning vents on the kind of a grill almost style or honeycomb look design that we have here and then we're going to have plenty of space within the glove box there and also more connectivity options here's a 12 volt power outlet a couple of usb yes there is a wireless charging pad here the conventional style shifter compared to the push button shifter that i know a lot of people don't necessarily like some do some don't cup holders and then here's your drive mode selector you can turn the auto stop start feature or idle stop off i always recommend doing that and then i think you know what else is here now you can adjust the height of the seat to compensate for your personal height that way you can use the center console lid as an armrest if you need to or want to and then you have the tray here that can go in two different places or you can just leave that out if you want to. A good bit of space within the center console as well. And on the driver's side door, well, 
likely everything you would expect to find here. You can control those heated power adjustable side view mirrors, all of the windows and all that good stuff. And some of your safety features there that you can turn off or back on. You do have a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And here is the dash. A very nice look as far as that goes. You can obviously go through and get different information depending on what you want to know about or what you want to see. You can see that I'm scrolling through and all I'm doing is using the scroll wheel right here. And then you just push on that wheel to select whatever it is you might want to know about or take a look at with your vehicle. So pretty simple as far as that goes. A very nice look. Somewhat simplistic, but yet still a nice modern look. Easy to use with the dash. You got your digital speedometer up there and all that good stuff. Even a voice crack from me making me sound like a teenager, even though I'm not quite there. I'm a long way from that. <laughs> Shifter paddles on the steering wheel. I have to say something about it, don't I? Shifter paddles on the steering wheel, and then you can control the headlight functionality and the fog lights. You can also use something called turn signals right here by changing the position of this lever. I know a lot of you are saying, what are you talking about, Tom? Turn signals, what is that? I can't say anything sarcastic or funny about this lever because this is how you're going to control the front and rear window wipers. But we do have the touch screen right here. A nice modern look, very different from what we saw with the 10th generation of the Civic, but just as easy to learn and use. But sitting at the 90 degree angle, that's going to reduce glare. That's a good thing. You do have built-in navigation, but you can also pair your smartphone if you would like to do that. Everybody has their preferences, but I know a common question I receive is, does it have built-in navigation? And you know the answer to that. Vehicle settings, well, it's very easy to find what it is you might need where that is concerned because, well, there is all of the graphics or are all of the graphics in case any grammar teachers are watching, English teachers are watching and say, Tom, you didn't say that correctly. Yes, that's right. They might, you never know. And we'll take a quick look here at our driving modes. What exactly are they? Well, we'll start out here with normal. I'll show you what the graphic looks like on the screen. We go down into econ mode. We go up to sport mode right here. Those are your driving modes. And you also have the multi-view rear view camera. Nice clear look at what you have behind you if you need to look down from the angle we're looking at right there to make sure you're not going to bump something behind you. Well, that's there as well. So Honda really has done a nice job with everything that we have here. Now, this model is dealer traded, which means I can't do a test drive. But don't go anywhere yet because what I'm actually going to do is insert a test drive with another Civic hatchback sport touring that you can watch and get the same information you need if you're interested in seeing what it's like to drive, at least here in the video. To be completely honest, this is one of my favorite things to do. Whenever I show one of these Honda Civics, whether it's the hatchback or the sedan, in one of my videos here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel, the test drive, it's just so fun to drive. Like I said earlier, it handles so well, and I'm not really trying that hard, and I'm already up over the speed limit, one thing that I didn't mention earlier, speaking of the speed limit, is that you do have the speed limit sign recognition on the dash on your digital instrument cluster. And I don't remember for sure if I said anything about this or not earlier, but let me cover it just in case you do have blind spot monitoring built into your side view mirrors here on the EXL trim level. But a really fun vehicle to drive. It's practical, it gets solid gas mileage, it's fun to drive. It handles great. When you're having a bad day and maybe you say to yourself, man, I just want to go out and have a spirited drive and blow off some steam out on the country roads, whatever the case is, you can do that with this Civic and it's going to deliver with a nice, fun, sporty driving experience. You may say, is 180 horsepower enough? Well, it sure seems to be. I know a lot of that's dependent on how many people you have in the vehicle or Maybe you have a lot of weight in the back, back there with the cargo area, something like that. I can't always test all of that. I wish I could. But based on my experience with 
my almighty 175 pounds of weight in the vehicle and nothing else, I know I have a good time driving these Civics. And beyond that, the ride quality is good. It may not be a Cadillac, but it's most certainly not a tank. Technology, easy to use or easy to learn. For those of you who maybe haven't had this kind of technology before and you're saying, well, I guess it's time. I don't have a choice. I've got to do something. So if you're looking for maybe the most simplistic when it comes to technology, really any modern day Honda model will deliver in that respect some of the easiest in the industry to learn, at least in my personal opinion. Overall, a very well-rounded vehicle. Obviously, depending on your situation, well, that's going to depend on how many people you have in your family and different things like that. But for the right person, the Civic hatchback is definitely a great choice. Okay, tell me what you think. Do the features match the price on this 2024 Honda Civic hatchback sport touring? Tell me what your thoughts are and tell me why you answer the way that you did. I'm always curious to know. I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Civic for the day. Normally I would leave a link down in the description to the exact vehicle we're looking at, but since this model has been dealer traded, I'll just leave a link to Holmes Honda. Tell whoever you come in and talk to if you do that Tom from Vehicle Visionary sent you their way. I want to say a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. And if you enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so so you can watch future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.